Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for the, uh, to the organizer of the conference. Uh, today I'll be pre presenting the, the, an ongoing project led by myself and my colleague Thibaut Claris. Um, it is called HDR United and it is dedicated to facilitating sharing a specific type of data uh, that is needed by users of uh, HDR software. So in just 10 minutes I will not be able to uh, cover anything but the basics. But if you're interested in learning more, feel free to get in touch with us during the conference or uh, afterwards. So let's begin with an observation. Uh, there are more and more people and institutions relying on HDR uh, technologies. We've had some examples today. Um, and thanks to HDR, uh, it is possible to imagine creating vast amounts of textual data based on ancient handwrite, handwritten documents. For libraries and archives, it's also a great opportunity to give access to their collections. However, in their current states, the HDR software usually requires users uh, to use tailor-made transcription models, this was mentioned during the, the second presentation. Uh, to put it simply, these models are um, files in which the software stores a series of configurations learned during a training phase. Obviously by now you have understood that HDR is a machine learning process. Um, these models are adapted to very specific handwritings, uh, but unfortunately training these models first require providing uh, software with examples. Um, of these handwritings along with the transcription that you expect. Um, these examples are what we call the training data or the ground truth. And the main issue is that the ground truth is costly and sometimes uh, complicated to produce. Um, which is the, why it is essential to be able to rely on training data that other people have already created before us. Another issue is that the existing ground truth is rarely fair. Um, the data sets are hard to find not always accessible. Um, they can be shared in various formats. Uh, they are sometimes created with transcription rules that are not compatible from one data set to the next. We had an example with a presentation just before. Um, and often the, the reuse conditions are not clear. Um, so HDR United intends to offer a solution to this situation. Um, HDR United is a diverse ecosystem thought to be as flexible as possible to make sure that it is easy to adopt for everyone. Uh, it takes several forms, and I, I'm just going to describe them in the next few slides. Um, first of all, HDR United is a, it is a catalog of data sets. So um, just to clarify, it is not a place to store data sets. It's a, a place to reference data sets that can be reused by anyone. So the catalog helps finding the data sets and understand what they contain. Uh, this catalog takes the form of a file that is both readable by humans and parsable by machines because it uses a lightweight structuring format called YAML. The catalog can also be browsed using our website. Um, we have filters to sort the data sets based on the languages, the period of time, etc. And it is also versioned, so each new version is published on Zenodo and has a DOI. Uh, a very essential guiding principle for us was to keep HDR United as low-tech as possible. First of all, because Thibault and I created the project as a side project. Um, on our personal time, and so we didn't want to spend too much time maintaining it. Um, but it also, it's, a, it's an interesting challenge and uh, makes it um, more accessible to, uh, to more people. Um, contrary to other similar initiatives, we rely on the creators of the datasets to uh, describe and add their datasets to the catalog. Uh, contributing is fairly simple, as the participants of yesterday's workshop hopefully observed. Uh, first of all, the creators of the datasets need to publish their dataset online using any data warehouse that they see fit. We just offer a template and some guidelines to help uh, have some standardized practices. Um, they could stop here, but if they actually want to contribute to HDR United, the creators of those datasets must then describe the datasets using our structured catalog entry. Uh, we have a form online on our website that makes it easy to generate uh, this, this entry. And then all they need to do is to submit this entry proposal to our GitHub organization. And Thibaut and I will have uh, a look at the content of the data sets and also review the description to make sure that there's no problem with it. Um, and then boom, you have a new entry in the, the catalog. Uh, we've made a lot of progress since we started the project in the aftermath of the 2020 confinement. Um, as of last week, there were 78 data sets registered in the catalog, provided by at least 36 different projects. 
Um, <clears throat> put together, if you were to put everything together, uh, the data sets would cover 21 languages, uh, seven different alphabets uh, for a period going from the 9th century to nowadays. Um, we wanted the catalog to be usable with as many HDR software as possible, and it seems to be working since we have at least uh, six different software registered for uh, the software used to produce the datasets. Um, although the great majority is uh, created with Escriptorium or Transcribus, um, we, uh, if we were to put everything together again, you would have a dataset that uh, contains uh, 20,000 lines, uh, 20,000 images, sorry, which is at least 1 million lines. Uh, those are just some metrics if you want to go back over that during the question session. Um, so what else is HDR United? It's also a schema. So in order to have a correctly structured series of catalog entries, we use a controlled vocabulary which we describe using JSON schema. Uh, the schema covers all the metadata that allow a creator to describe their data sets and allow a reuser to understand what it contains. So for example, that covers the language used, the script, the period, but also the character sets in the data set, um, the title or the name of the, the data set, a link to access it, some license, um, sorry, some metrics like the numbers of, of pages or lines, uh, or very important, the license that is applicable to the data sets. We also include information uh, on the condition of production of the, the data sets, namely the authors and all the contributors with their uh, corresponding roles, um, as well as the software used to create uh, the annotation. Our long-term goal is to also build a control vocabulary for uh, the transcription guidelines so that people could easily filter out the data sets that are compatible with each other or, on the contrary, not compatible. A very important aspect of the schema is that its evolution is transparent and documented. The schema is version, and anyone can open a discussion to request that something is added or to discuss some choices that we've made. Anyone can also jump in the uh, the adventure to take part fully in the construction of the scheme. Um, lastly, HDR United comes with a series of tools, so it's also a toolbox. These tool, uh, tools help ensuring the good quality of the data sets and of their description. I'll, I'll go quickly over each of those uh, tools. HDR, uh, HDR, sorry, controls the validity of the catalog entries and even helps uh, building the main catalog file. Asterix is very useful to control the validity of the XML files themselves. Um, you can, for example, spot empty lines uh, using Asterix. Home generator computes metrics, such as the number of files, regions, lines, characters, etc. Basically, anything that you probably don't want to count by hand. Um, Shokomuffin, which, uh, which was created by Thibault and Ayan Pinch, creates a table of all the characters used uh, in a data set. Uh, so, for example, you would be able to um, transform the euro symbols into something else if this doesn't fit your transcription rules uh, for your data set. And all of these tools can be applied using GitHub Action, uh, but I do not have the time to go uh, over this uh, today. So why is it important to contribute to HDR United when you create training data? As I mentioned before, HDR United is at the service of the community of users of HDR to help creators of data follow the FAIR principles it is also a way for us to call for the recognition of ground truth data sets as a scientific outcomes, which should be valorized like other scientific outcomes. For the community, a catalog like HDR United helps creating transcription models faster and more generic models which cover more languages and more diverse handwritings. This is very important and this is something that we will talk about tomorrow during a long paper session. Um, and finally, with, this, uh, with its schema, HDR United paves the way for a standardization of transcription practices, because if you put everything together, you, you see the discrepancies between the data sets, and then you can start addressing the, the problems. Um, to conclude this presentation, here are three thoughts on, for the future. Um, on top of a catalog like HDR United, we also need data papers to come with um, the ground truth data sets because a catalog entry cannot cover all the complexity of the creation of a, a ground truth data set. Um, we also love catalog entries that come with data papers, so in the future we might make that more visible uh, in the catalog when you browse the, the different data sets. Uh, and we are not excluding one day creating a data, a data journal associated with HDR United specifically for the publication of data papers on HDR ground truth. 
Uh, this is already the end of this 10 minute uh, presentation. So thank you for your attention. And once again, feel free to get in touch if you want more information.